Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be showing you how to set up an Nginx reverse proxy with SSL on the Ubuntu server 20.04 LTS. Let's get started. First, let's talk about what exactly a reverse proxy server is and why you might want to use one. Basically, a reverse proxy server is positioned in front of your backend servers, which allows a visitor to access services on the local network, even if they're not directly exposed to the internet. In turn, this allows you to host many services on the same IP address without exposing unnecessary ports. For example, let's say I already have a website running on port 80 of my public IP address. Without a reverse proxy, if I wanted to add another website, I'd have to open up another port on my network, such as 81. This can be very dangerous and can make your network more susceptible to attacks. On the other hand, if I did have a reverse proxy, I could route my second web server to a subdomain, which would allow it to communicate on the internet without having to open any additional ports. Additionally, all TLS encryption can be performed by the proxy server, which further reduces the load on the web servers. Now, there are many different options when it comes to reverse proxy servers, including Apache, Nginx, Caddy, and many others. For my purposes, I chose to use Nginx because it's a fairly lightweight, easy to configure server that offers relatively high performance. To install Nginx, type sudo apt update and then sudo apt install Nginx. After installation, we can type sudo ufw allow 80 slash tcp and sudo ufw allow 443 slash tcp to allow the necessary ports. If you navigate to your server's IP address, you should now see the default Nginx webpage. This means that Nginx is working properly. Now, we need to remove the default site and add our reverse proxy configuration. To do this, type cd etsy slash nginx slash sites dash enabled, and then type ls to list the files. Here, we can see there's a file called default. To remove the default config, type sudo rm default. Before you add your reverse proxy configuration, you have to decide the structure of your proxy. As you can see here, I have one domain with two subdomains commento.epc.com and analytics.epc.com. You have to make sure that all your subdomains have DNS CNAME records that point to your server's domain name. This is an example in Google domains, but it may vary depending on your DNS provider. This diagram shows that I want epc.com to be proxied to localhost port 8081, the commento subdomain to be proxied to 192.168.0.230 port 80, and the analytics subdomain to be proxied to 192.168.0.36 port 80. These three subdomains will each require a different config file in Nginx. Templates for the config file we make in this video will be linked in the description below. To begin, we can create our first config file in the Etsy Nginx sites-available directory, which I'll name reverse-proxy.conf. This file will serve a few purposes, redirecting heatpc.com to www.heatpc.com, redirecting HTTP to HTTPS, and reverse proxying to port 8081 on localhost. The first thing to add in this file is a server block, which will listen on www.heatpc.com port 80 and redirect visitors to HTTPS. Now, we'll add another server block, which will listen on heatpc.com port 80 and redirect visitors to www.yeetpc.com with HTTPS. Our third server block will listen on yeetpc.com port 443 and redirect the HTTPS traffic to www.yeetpc.com. This server block also contains information about SSL certificates, which we'll modify later when we obtain them. The last server block will perform the actual proxy. It'll listen on www.heatpc.com port 443 and proxy requests to localhost port 8081. To do this, we can add a location block within the server block. Within the location block, we set proxy headers, which Nginx forwards to the backend, and we add the proxy pass and proxy redirect with the IP address and port of the backend server. The next few lines are optional, 
but I recommend using them because they heighten the security of your server. These lines enable HSTS, clickjacking protection, XSS protection, and disable content and mime sniffing. Finally, I added a line which adds the trailing slash to all URLs. After adding all these lines to the file on your server, save and close your text editor. Now, we're done adding the first config file, but there's one more step. We have to symlink the file to the site's enabled directory. To do this, type sudo ln s etsy nginx slash sites dash available slash reverse dash proxy dot conf, then space slash etsy slash nginx slash sites dash enabled slash reverse dash proxy dot conf. Now, if you type ls slash etsy slash nginx slash sites enabled, you should see your new config file. The next config file will be slightly different because it's for a subdomain. Using this config will proxy traffic from the Comento subdomain to a backend server at 192.168.0.230, port 80. To start making this config, we can create another file in the site's available directory titled comento.conf. The first server block we'll add will redirect traffic from HTTP on port 80 to HTTPS on port 443. This next server block will perform the actual proxying. It'll listen on comento.epc.com port 443 and proxy requests to 192.168.0.230 port 80. To do this, we'll add a location block inside the server block. Within the location block, we set proxy headers, which Nginx forwards to the backend, and we add the proxy pass and proxy redirect with the IP address and port of the backend server. Again, these security headers are optional but they'll greatly improve the security of your server, so I recommend that you add them. After adding these two server blocks, save the file and exit out of your editor. Finally, we can simulate this config to the site's enabled directory using the command shown on screen. For any other subdomains that you have, you can simply copy the previous config file and replace the server name with your new subdomain, along with the address of your backend server. Now that we've created our config files, we have to obtain an SSL certificate for each subdomain. To do this, we can use CertBot, which allows you to obtain a Let's Encrypt certificate. CertBot will also automatically change the path to your certificate in the config files, so you don't have to do that manually. To install CertBot on Ubuntu server, type sudo apt install python3-certbot-nginx. Then, to obtain an SSL certificate for the www and non-www domains, type sudo certbot dash dash nginx dash d yeetpc.com dash d www .com. After entering this command, certbot asks for some information, including your email address, agreement to the terms of service, and whether you want to subscribe to the newsletter. Then, certbot will obtain your certificate. Great! you've successfully obtained an SSL certificate for your main domain. To obtain certs for your subdomains, simply repeat this command, replacing the part after the D with your subdomain URL. Finally, to put our changes into action, we can type sudo system control restart nginx. Then you can visit each of your subdomains and verify that they're accessible and working properly with HTTPS. Finally, we need to set up a cron job to automatically renew our SSL certificates. To do this, type sudo crontab-e. Then, add this line to try to automatically renew the certs every day at 1 a.m. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more videos. Feel free to leave a comment with any questions or suggestions you might have. Also, make sure you check out my blog where I post articles about many of my projects. Thanks for watching and see y'all next time.